Thank you, and a thank you to Stacy for um, organizing all these wonderful events. Um, like Stacy said, I was here two, almost two summers ago with Clay House at the Chop House, and it was a lot of fun. So when she called me earlier in the summer, I absolutely agreed to come on and do this again and showcase our Washington State wineries. Um, a little history, like she said, my family's been in business in Washington State for uh, about over 110 years. I'm fourth and fifth generation on both sides of Washington State. Um, but that doesn't make sense really for Clay House, which is in Paso Robles. Long story short, we come out of timber industry. We ended up in agriculture in California, but most of us still live in Washington, and heck, we love Washington wine, so why not make some um, some, some wine up there? Um, we're doing beautiful stuff, so I'm really excited to showcase them. Um, what we've um, pouring tonight, we're pouring two different wineries, Buried Cane, which is from the Columbia Valley, and then Cataretta, which is our Walla Walla-based winery. Um, we are mostly located, our offices and everything, in Walla Walla, which is kind of becoming the more central kind of, it's kind of, it's, it's not like Napa at all, believe me, but it's kind of the centralized kind of wine area becoming known and has a lot of the restaurants and has some, you know, a, a few hotels um, to stay at. So it's nice for like a long weekend to come and visit. And it's just filled with amazing, amazing wineries coming out of that. Um, we are developing um, 300 acres in an area of, of Walla Walla called South, um, South Wind Vineyards, but it's in the Seven Hills area. Believe it or not, it's actually in Oregon, which people don't know, but in Walla, the Walla Walla Appalachian just drops below right into Oregon, and it's still a Washington State Appalachian. So a lot of those wines from like Abeja or Seven Hills or Cayuse and stuff, a lot of them are actually a little bit on the Oregon side. That doesn't mean anything's wrong with the Washington side because there's amazing wines coming out of there, but it's just a funny little note that a lot of people don't realize about it. Um, but I happen to live in Seattle, so I, um, I don't get there as often as I was like, but because I'm always on a plane traveling around the country or going down to Passive Robles. That's why it's overcast today. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I'm sorry. I've been here all week. Now give me a break. <laughs> I flew in Monday. Um, but anyway, um, I want to go through the wines a little bit and, our, and a little bit of our philosophy as we go through it. Um, some of you have been asking questions, so there'll be a little repetitive stuff going on. But we started out with the Buried Cane Chardonnay. And the Chardonnay is a no-oak Chardonnay. Um, why are we doing a no-oak Chardonnay? Um, personally, because I like no-oak Chardonnays, um, for one. Um, what I really like is to showcase the actual fruit that comes out of a Chardonnay. Um, you're going to get a lot of apples and pears that naturally are uh, characteristic of that grape. Um, we also grow a lot of Washington, um, apple and pears in Washington State and some of the same areas where we grow wines um, out in eastern Washington. And so it guy always reminds me also of Washington State when you taste that and have a lot of uh, the apples and pears. It's um, a really fresh, crisp, refreshing. It also is a nice food wine with seafood and lots of other things, but it's really just fun to drink on its own. Um, with the buried cane in general, we're not trying to do what we call a lot of invention, intervention in the wines. We're trying to make wines that actually showcase Washington State fruit and the cool climate that we have. And one of the things about Washington State that is different from California and, and why we have, we make a ton, not that you don't in Washington and California, because we make great food wines down in California as well, but you have to be, it's a little bit different style of wine making. Up in Washington, you have to worry about too much acid. In Washington, you, I mean in California, you have to worry about too much alcohol and going overboard with the ripening of the fruit. But we tend to, overall like acids in our wines. Why? Because acids enhance food with wines. And so that's what's a beautiful thing about Washington State. So our white wines, we're doing, we're sourcing the fruit, even though we have a vineyard there, we're never going to get our fruit off that vineyard for the white wines because it's too hot in Walla Walla. We're going to Yakima and Northern Columbia Valley. Um, and in these areas in Washington, we get what you call, and it's, this is a little technical, so I, I mean it's not technical, but it's baby born, a little bit of a diurnal, it's a, called a diurnal shift. And what it means is that we get really in Washington State, Eastern Washington, not Western Washington, overall, you get a big, high, high, hot, hot temperatures, as hot as here in the summer and in the day, and then they drop a ton at night. I mean, significantly, it cools off significantly, so it allows the grapes to actually cool and rest during the night, and it helps maintain the acids in the white and in, 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 in the grapes in general in Washington. This is a little bit different story than you have in Washington, in California, that some of them mostly don't have that that big temp, 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 change in temperature. We also get at least three hours more of sunlight in the summer, so it helps also we get the ripening of the grapes. So it's kind of a wonderful thing um, for food and wine to go together. Um, also in the whites, we make the whites what we call in a little reductive style, and what in a reductive style, and what that means is we don't, in the, it's a little bit more hands-on, I mean everything's hands-on in this industry, but it's even a 
little bit more. And all it means, and I'm not going to go into it, is means that we don't allow air contact between the grapes once they're pressed and go into this until they're through fermentation. And and the whites particularly, this allows a lot of the fruit, the really fresh crispness in the fruits, the aromatics to be enhanced and the fruit to be enhanced and really make those just wonderfully crisp, refreshing wines and, and, and wines. So that's going on why we would source more from Yakima and Northern Columbia Valley for the whites because it's even cooler than Walla Walla. Um, the second wine we showcased was the Cataretta SBS. The Cataretta SBS it stands for Sauvignon Blanc Semillon. Um, it's a white Bordeaux style. Um, in, but the SBS, the name, the moniker comes from actually in Australia. They grow a lot of Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon in Australia. They'll belly up to the bar and they'll go, hey, May, give me an SSB, which stands for Semillon Sauvignon Blanc, which means Semillon is the primary, the mo majority of the grape, Sauvignon Blanc follows in the percentage. And then they say, hey mate, give me an SBS, which stands for Sauvignon Blanc Semillon, meaning there's more Sauvignon Blanc than Semillon in the grape. So that's kind of, we took that kind of moniker and made it fun with it, even though we're making it, you know, it's a, it kind of considered a, a bit of a white Bordeaux style. Although again, it's stainless steel, it's made in that reductive style. This is really um, an amazing food wine. It's um, been doing really well in, in all over the country. We, we, our first release was 07. It's been written up a lot. It's probably considered one of the number one to number two wine, white, white wines coming out of Washington State right now. And I'm really just extremely proud of this wine and, and what we're doing with it. Um, the third wine is the Cataretta Cabernet, I mean, Buried Cane Cabernet. And so Buried Cane, again, we're going to have three wines of these and three wines of the Cataretta. Again, I'm dropping back into that really kind of fresh fruit forward really neutral oaking program so that the neutral oak really allows the fruits to shine through also allows us to show the acids acids coming out of the wine and i'm not going on an acid trip here i'm sorry but i do mention that <laughs> word a lot sorry and um and so really just this bottle you can drink every day you can open it you could be at a wine bar at home and open it drink it on its own but you can also you know, pair it with food. And this is one that I pair with your traditional meats and things, but this is also something that I'll pair with maybe a, a nice salmon. We have a lot of salmon in Washington. I drink it with this and it's wonderful, especially a kind of a heavier, fattier salmon. And I don't mean fatty in the sense of like, it's gonna do you harm. I just mean a fattier salmon. So, um, and then the wines that you haven't had yet, um, the last, the next one will be Buried Cane, also from, um, from Bar I'm sorry, it's Heartwood blend from Buried Cane. This is a blend of Syrah, Grenache, Bouvetre, and Cunoise. Um, so this is actually kind of, um, this is gonna be a little bit, slightly heading a little more serious than the first two buried canes. Um, it's still gonna be a neutral oaking program, but the vineyards that we're using are very serious wine vineyards. And this, I, I just really want you to taste it because it's, I don't even need to describe it. It's just a beautiful, has a beautiful perfume. It has that Syrah. It's like a, kind of a Rhone style blend. It's real balanced and, um, I think you'll have a lot of a lot of fun with that. Um, I'm not sure how long I'm supposed to talk either, so I'm just uh, kind of like getting here. Um, then we're going to go into the last two, the Cataretas. Um, we're going to have our um, Syrah, our Cabernet. Oh no, I'm sorry, Syrah first, which I don't have. Oh, I do have a bottle here. The Syrah. I'm kind of like Vanna White right now. Um, <laughs> and so the Syrah, um, Washington State has become, particularly Walla Walla, very very well known for its Syrahs. Um, we make big Syrahs, and um, this Syrah also will have a little Mavedra and Grenache in it. So again, we're playing with the kind of that French kind of Rome style going on in it. Um, and um, we're sourcing the fruit uh, still a little bit between Walla Walla and then Columbia Valley while our vineyard comes online. The fruit in this, the Syrah, is coming from um, a, a vineyard called Stone Tree. Up in, it's called the Waluke Slope near Othello. It's the middle of nowhere, Columbia Valley. You probably don't need to know where it is. But the reason we source this fruit from there is because it is the oldest wines in the state. It gives a lot of character to the Syrah and um, it just really enhances everything that we're doing. doing. Um, again, a lot of Syrahs are really big. A lot of wine, you know, the red wines can be very big coming out of Washington State. One of the things that I think you'll notice with our wines overall, but particularly in these last two, is even though these are big wines, there's a lot of balance between the fruit and the tannins. Because these are more going to have more serious oaking programs where the berry cane does not. Um, it's a, the berry cane is going to be more neutral and let the fruit shine. This is also going to be one that you could lay down for a number of years, but you can also drink and you know give it a little breathe for a few minutes, at least give it a chance, um, and then oh, and then drink it. And it's going to be, are you raining? I'm sorry. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and 
so um, I guess I'm under something. And so be real balanced between the fruit and the oak. And I think that's a beautiful thing. It's a little bit more European in style in terms of that philosophy. Um, and then the last wine is the Cabernet um, Sauvignon. It has a little Merlot Cab Franc and um, I'm sorry, Petit Verdot Cab Franc and Merlot in it as well. And um, I'm going to stop in a second and just really enjoy it and come up and talk to me about it.